Hi guys, this is Majestic Gaming here. Today we have a special session with the Twitch chat who has just shared with me some of the patch notes, of the upcoming patch notes. So we're gonna go through this together and you know, hopefully we can share you some insights and keep you guys up to date. Firstly, we have the item change. Dagon now have a cooldown with 15 seconds. And what does this mean is, I think this is a great change to Dagon because Currently with Dagon is whoever finds Dagon in early to mid game before round 20 is just so strong because it's as if you got a laner that casts an ulti right off and again it's, it's going to cast it after in about 20 seconds. So Dagon is too powerful in early games to have no CD at the start of the round and Dagon is too bad for the player that uses Dagon in the late game because you can randomly Dagon a Tide or a Dusa and then just get mana and just, they just cast before all your team does because they get damaged. So this change really balance out the early game power for the Dagon and balance out the late game disadvantage for the Dagon. Because after 15 seconds, I'm sure they would have got mana by then. So Dagon is pretty great for supplementary damage. This is very interesting. A new item called Battle Fury combines with the Perseverance and the Demon Age. I know Demon Age is pretty hard to find, but sometimes we do find it. What's so interesting about it is not that 30 damage, not the health regen, on the mana regen, although it does not stack with Perseverance. What it gives you is a 300 radius cleave of pure damage. Now, the writer of this article is saying he's not sure it's 180 or not. I don't mind. Looks like it is a full circle, I see. So how chess unit, you know, how cleave works in Dota is 180. Maybe in chess is 360, so it goes around the unit that's hitting. That's really incredible. And I think some great lineup can make great use of this. If you guys didn't know, Doom have 700 damage at level three. <laughs> Doom with this can basically wipe the entire table with a few hits. Cause Doom is demon, he does pure damage. If he, if he cleaves pure damage, he can kill everything. What I'm really thinking would be interesting would be units that actually deal a lot of damage with the spells like Tusk. Tusk, the punch, as you guys know, the one punch has a critical damage and with that critical, Tusk can do massive AoE damage with a uh, cleave that is. And we have seen that in Dota before. So yeah, this is gonna be a very interesting item. Summons change, let's have a look at this. Summons getting an overhaul and will now have 10 levels synchronized to the core level as well as summons cost level. What that means is not fully yet clear, but indications that summons abilities might summon at reduced mana rather than 100 mana based on career level and cost of the unit. I think they're really adjusting the power spikes, the zoo, or the summonings of the Furion and you know the Lone Druid really gets in the early game because sometimes they're so overpowered in the early game and they don't do much in the late game. I think they balance it a bit. I think what that's going to do is really affect how Lycan interacts because Lycan's Wolf is really good in the early to mid game but they really force off so they're pushing some of the summoning units to the late game while they're taking away the early game advantages I think I like that because the elf and the druids and the summons are just they're just everywhere you can't hit them and they hit you really hard and you know they have two second evasion and just talking about elves we're gonna be seeing race changes elf 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 Rachel Oh, so yes, the elf had a much needed nerf, by the way. So we don't mind the last one, because the last one, no one's going to go for nine elves most of the time, because evasions, in case you guys didn't know, it's diminishing return. What that means is it stacks multiplicity. So instead of adding 25% to 25%, it's going to be 25% plus 25% times 75%. And that's going to end up with 43, 42% of evasion instead of just adding. So it's a little bit less than just adding. And the last one is going to be 25% times 50%. So the last tier of the elf actually gives 12.5% instead of 25%. So diminishing returns. And elves had a little slight nerf. So the evasion from the first stack is reduced. What this means is three elves might no longer be so overpowered with the anti-mage. But I think anti major will still be on top of my list for the tier list. Goblins. Six goblins. Uh, what? Goblins ratio fixed for six goblins to affect all goblins with buff. Uh, isn't that the same as currently? So currently six all of the goblins will be affected by the goblin buff. Uh, I'm not sure if I understand this one. We need to clear up or we need to test it out when it's released. 
Let's look at more. Unit changes. Bonus physical damage is reduced for units in stone guys from 30% to 20%. Yeah, in case many of us that weren't aware, not only does Medusa stone the unit for three seconds when they look at her for two seconds, she also I think it's two seconds when you look at her. So yeah, she stones him for three seconds at level two. She also increased the physical damage received. And that's massive sometimes combined with techies or warrior lineup that does a lot of physical damage. This is so great because not only you're stunning for three seconds, you also increase the damage taken. But I think this is okay. Definitely acceptable. Dragon Knight's splash damage is reduced, by the way, from 75% to 50%. I think this is not bad because sometimes in the mid game, a two-star Dragon Knight just means Everything dies. He three hits basically all the units in the front line. He three hits all the units in the back line. And unless there's someone that's distracting him. So I think this is a nice nerf to Dragonite. Although this is quite a sizable nerf. So we're gonna be seeing we're gonna be seeing dragons, but they're not so dominating, which is great. Slack seems to be the MVP for this one. Hey, where's Alchemist? This is not fair guys. Slack default armor, um, yeah, he was zero. Now it's five. It's okay. Jump is changed. So jump has a really low CD. I think Slark is going to move up on my list in terms of assassins. And as a two-star two unit, two-cost unit that is. Jump is reduced. Notice how the disarm duration is also fixed on five. Because usually no one really gets stuck to three-star. We really look at the two-star Slark. A two-star Slark is going to have a six-second disarm. And it's going to disarm for five seconds. What that means is if a Slark was fighting a Templar, Slark might actually win if Slark can keep hitting her because Slark can disable her for so long, disarm her. Game changes. Changes to actual track unit class using a variable. This should fix synergies working on your mirror chest team that faces enemy replicating team. More stat gather. Yeah, I think they're really collecting a lot of stats. So that's really good to know. And a few core changes is nice. What I'm really liking is a new item because every new item, there's so many combinations and so much synergies and so much fun. And when you see a task just hits and everything dies in front of him, that's going to be very nice. Maybe we'll see some games when this new changes comes out. And other than that, I think some much needed tweaks with the item, with the class, because Elf, you know, Elf's just stomping everyone over here and goblins i'm not sure what they meant by goblins and will definitely be on the lookout for because you know i'm a big goblin fan and the summoning change will definitely test it out i think they nerfed it they nerfed the summoning for the early game they give it a little boost for the late game which by no means is this is the good thing for the zoo or for the beast this is not a good thing because beast excels and yes Thank you guys so much for viewing this upcoming patch notes. What I'll be doing is in the future notes, if I find upcoming patch notes, we'll do a special video as a recording for Twitch and for YouTube. So we keep you guys updated and ahead of everyone. And you know, we look forward to all those good things that's coming. So again, thank you guys so much for subscribing, liking, and supporting me on Twitch and YouTube. I really appreciate it. I'll see you guys next time. Take care and have a good day.